Coach, we're on to Detroit now. Um, this is that play, you know, everyone's talking about Detroit and how they ran the football all, all over Philadelphia. This is a play they run called triple, you call it triple trap, I call it wham, with the trap influence, same thing. Um, Doug Peterson runs this, you guys have seen this before. I think Philadelphia does a poor job fitting this here. Can you talk about some of the difficulties and why this play is tough to, to fit? Well, the, the, first of all, the, the, the reason why the play is such a good play is because you're creating angles for your blockers, yes. more so than anything else. You know, and it starts with, for the most part, they're attacking the three technique, mm -hmm. okay? Yep. And that being number 97 for right. Philadelphia. So as we watch this, from the wide angle, you're going to see all the angles that they're going to have. The first angle is going to be here, this wide receiver to the bottom of the screen. has got an angle on the safety. Love okay, it. so now what's going to happen is because he's going to block the safety, the corner's got to fit. Okay, now what they're doing is they're allowing the defensive end to get upfield, mm. and the run is going to come right off of how they block the three technique. Okay? Yep. Now as we get to the, we get to the, uh, the, 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 uh, the front angle, now what we're going to do is we're going to sit here and we're going to see the big influence coming from, first of all, they're going to bluff 97, Yep. okay, and nobody touches him. So now right away his instincts should be telling him, okay, I've got a wham block coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And with that, a lot of teams will cross shoulder that, okay. So taking his left shoulder and to cross, the tight end. Yes, yeah. across the tight end, for trying to keep that ball compact inside right. so it doesn't get up on the safety. Yes. Okay, or excuse me, up on the corner because, again, the safety is going to get cracked. Okay? And the corner has to and crack the And the corner the now has to tackle. Right. Okay, so that's what you're going to see. So now what happens is he's one-on-one -on -one with a corner. Yeah. Corner doesn't necessarily want to have to <laughs> tackle the running back who's got a full head of steam. Right, I mean, right. and again, that's, I mean, that's the truth of it. It's, it's a tough play to ask the corner, hey, read pass. Yep. See the – the crack, and make replace, the and now make the tackle. And so one thing that I noticed, too, is last week Derek Forrest did an excellent job when a receiver came to crack him, knocking that receiver's teeth in. Yes. How important would that be on this play for the safety oh. to play that block physically? Well, here? very important because what happens is if he attacks, if he attacks the receiver, right, yep. and stuffs him back into the hole, yeah. now the ball is going to have to bounce. And when the ball bounces, the runner no longer has a downhill run at the corner. Yep. It, it's kind of interesting because that's one of the things that last year – going back to Antonio Gibson, that we used to tell Antonio, if you get in the second level, don't dance and run right. sideways. That's what they want. Go right at him. Make him have to square up and shoulder tackle you, and you're going to break a lot of tackles. Yeah, so there, just if the three technique plays it a little bit cleaner, the back's got a bubble. If the safety plays it cleaner, the back's got a bubble. That's two people kind of out of position that put the corner in a tough spot. Absolutely. Right. And again, that's why it's so successful. So, you know, we've had an opportunity to look at it. We've had an opportunity to rep it. Yeah. Hopefully it clicks for our guys. It <laughs> gets dialed in, right? And again, this is another play. It's just duo to the front side, and the back cuts it back to the back side. And it just, to me, it shows like how important everybody's fit is yes. when you're fitting runs here. Because it's, you yes. know, sevens on the back side of this run, gets a little bit loose, and ends up being a six yard gain off of a kind of a nothing run. Yes. And, and it's interesting because, again, if you look at it, they're playing some form of either quarters or cover two. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and you know that because the f middle of the field is open. Correct. Yep. And so now what happens is it's an optimal opportunity for them to run. They've got big personnel in the game. They've got two tight ends. And, again, duo is, is, is one of these zone plays where they're just doubling up, yep. giving the ball to the, to, the, uh, to the back and letting him find the crease, and then he cuts inside and makes a play out of it. And for the most part, you know, he cuts it to the back side. Yep. And as you look at it, the big thing that has to happen is the linebackers have to get downhill. If they don't get downhill into their gaps and take those double teams off, okay, that allows these guys to stay with their blockers yeah. longer. And if they can stay with their blocks longer, that means they can go ahead and control the defensive line. And okay. so what you see again, you see pass rush mode by the left defensive end. Yep. He's going to get upfield. He's going to create this huge seam. You're going to see the wide receiver come down to crack the safety. And again, they're going to ask the corner to have to come in and make a tackle. And it's just such a big hole for the cornerback to have to, to make that play. Like, and if, and if seven squeezes that as opposed to going up the field, again, you get into that bubble scenario you were talking about earlier. Right. So just people being disciplined, just doing your job, and some of these runs don't even happen. Absolutely, and that's one of the things that I know Jack has talked with in, in the defensive meetings to these guys, and that is about playing sound, disciplined, mm. run gap responsibility. If you can do that and force this team to be one-dimensional, you can slow them down because this really is a very good running team. We're going to talk a little bit about the rush today, okay. right? But like with any good rush, there has to be good coverage here. Yes. And I think you guys are in some type of quarters coverage mm -hmm. here. we got these guys in the back here. 
They're going to kind of fall back into this quarter shell here, and they got to match this stuff. And I think they do a really nice job of this, which allows the rush to get home. All right, and for the most part, because we are we are in our quarter concept, it is really about matching and making sure we got guys over the top of people that we need to have them over. Because that, for the most part, when the team's trying to get the ball downfield vertically, yeah. that's going to give our pass rush time to get after the quarter. And again, you guys know that here because this is third and 15, third yeah. and 12, something like that. So I love how the guys are being really disciplined here. Yes. They're all kind of getting to their spots. They're falling underneath stuff, yep. really deep, kind of protecting those sticks as yep. opposed to kind of taking the cheese. No one wants to jump up on this Correct. guy and kind of, you know. Right, that's a rally up and tackle, yeah. make them punt the ball. In terms of first down. But I think the real exciting part of this yes. play is the rush here. And something you said to me a couple weeks ago now, and learn something new every time we talk, right, is yep. that you don't really run games from a shade here, from a, yep. someone who's lined up over the center. Yep. So someone yep. like in this position here, right? Because it, the tackle doesn't expect it, right? I, you right. know, I coach high school football. I say, if you get a three technique, set vertical nice and tight, expect the game. But yep. here, not on your radar, and it does an excellent job here in terms of allowing Montez Sweat yep. to win inside on this rush and out on the loop around the edge. Yeah, and what happens on this is, really, if you got to watch how, how, how Jonathan engages with the guard, right? He gets to, the, he's heavy on the guard. He's not heavy on the center. Because if he was heavy on the, on, on, on the center, right. that would allow the guard to just stick his hand out and right. work out and take Montez's inside charge Absolutely. away. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so what he does, he works heavy to the, uh, to the guard, get his attention, work inside. Yeah. And now what we could call is entertain and then contain, okay? <laughs> yes. So okay. he's going to entertain the guard, yep. and then once he sees that, He's going to work around. outside. Now, what happens with Montez, Montez is going to have the first shot. He's going to go for the inside of the quarterback. Why? Because he knows Jonathan is going to contain. Yep. Okay, and once Jonathan goes to contain, he has basically flushed him to Jonathan. Yeah, and I love that. I love how, like, you, you mentioned the details there. And I think the thing mm -hmm. is, I like I, you can see it so clearly on this film, like John's hand on the outside pad here, yep. right? And that, how he's captured it, right? Yep. So no way that the guard can get back out there. And like you said, Montez is a big, strong dude. Yep. And for him to run straight to the quarterback is excellent. And again, to flush him out right here, that's, I mean, that's how you draw it up. And I love, because you guys did that all throughout the game, which was great. Well, you know, it's one of the things these guys constantly work on are the different line games, line stunts that they can run. Yeah, and you, you said you, they run a whole bunch of those every yes. single day, right? Yes. And again, here's another line stunt, right? And again, everybody working together. And I love this, what would you call it? You call it a knot stunt? Yep. Uh, yeah. And again, the physicality with which Payne does this and how it kind of disrupts everything. And even there's some nuance here by Allen, too, as well, I think. Absolutely. Again, if you watch what happens, again, what we have to do is we've got to drive into the, into the, into the guard yeah. who's going to work towards the center. Yep. And the key, though, is... What now has to happen is we can't take our eyes and throw our eyes opposite of where we're going because if we do, what happens is they can pass the stump, but they yep. don't. So what Jonathan does, again, he gets the center's attention. Yep. Okay? And What'd if you Jonathan's say? Inter entertain, right? Entertain. <laughs> and now he's going to go ahead and, again, it's a great pick stump. But what's even better is it's a better ricochet by 94. Yeah. Oh. Deron, instead of burying himself, ricochets off of the center and gets vertical. Yeah, what happens that. on this, and this is what we talk about, making sure that, the, that both rushes yeah. are working in unison. Watch how the defensive ends get to the level of the quarterback and force him to step up and he's got nowhere to go. Yeah, and you were talk we talked about this before. Like Montez, just the feel here, gets a little bit wide, but right there at the level of the quarterback yes. you're talking about, he starts bullying into the tackle and, again, yes. compresses the pocket so that Absolutely. there's nowhere for that guy to go. And, and the nice thing is, watch how they finish the stunt. Oh. Like you said earlier, all four guys <laughs> on the quarterback. I mean, that's good stuff, man. I'd love to see that against Detroit yes. this week. Coach, thank you so much. Right. Always a pleasure, man.